Well folks, welcome back to uh, the shop and to what I'm hoping is going to be the final video in our series on uh, restoring, restemming this uh, Ben Wade pipe. So what we're going to do now uh, is we're going to shape the stem. And the first steps of that are done very roughly and they're going to be done on a belt sander. Uh, I'm going to take you over there now. What I'm going to do at first is just get this uh, bite zone region to a flat so that I can start to establish the button using files and then we'll do some more belt sander after that. So let me take you over to the belt sander. All right, so here we are at the belt sander. This is a Delta, I believe it's a Powermatic uh, one inch by 42 inch belt, uh, ED grit. And the camera angle is a bit odd here and it, it actually was kind of difficult to to do this with the camera in place but uh, hopefully you'll be able to see something and hopefully I will be able to make the part without screwing it up because I've got to reach in at a really strange angle. Alright so the, the sander's running and what we're doing here is we're, we're making an angle on the end just to establish the line that's uh, slightly above that tape. Normally I would do this straight up and down, but I, I can't get my arms straight enough for it. There you can see that angle. There we go. That, that's how I would normally cut this. And we want to get just slightly above the tape, because we know the tape is about a quarter inch. And the closer we get to it, the less we have to cut away with filing. So that's good. flatten both ends to line up with the uh, the tape all right folks so we uh, we went over to the belt sander and we flattened this um, and again it's flattened reference to the slot that we cut now we're gonna mark out the button and to do that I like to use calipers uh, I'm gonna set them at 150 thousandths which is where I start. It's probably going to be a little bit less than that in the end, but we're going to need to file some off and whatnot. Uh, so I'm just going to use these to scribe a line straight across and referencing off this face. And I'm going to do that as best I can. It's a little hard to catch that face because it's not perfectly square, but that's okay. Hope you can, hopefully you can see that line that's been scribed in there. I'll do that on the other side as well. And for you guys that are panicking because I'm using the calipers in this way, this is a cheap Chinese pair that I keep for just such purposes. My starrets are locked away. Okay, so we got a line scribed on both faces. Now we're going to use a diamond file. Uh, not a diamond file, a uh, triangular file, just a little triangular needle file. And we're going to use that just to deepen that scribe line a little bit. So you'll be able to feel it and then just use that as your reference. Remember, always file in one direction. Always file in the direction the file is supposed to file in, which is forward of the handle. All right, that should be good. So we just want enough because the next step is going to be to use this guy. Um, this is a luthier tool, so I had this from back when I was making mandolins. Uh, it's designed to cut the um, the slot that the nut fits into, and it does a great job of that, but we're going to be using it to cut a rectangular slot behind this line, and that's going to basically give us our button. So we're going to start off 
using the, it's got a fine edge and a, and a rough edge. We're going to start off with the fine edge. And we're referencing off that previous line as best we can. And with each pass, I'm tilting it a little bit more uh, so that it's going to be eventually perpendicular to the surface here. I think you get the idea. Uh, I'm going to need to do this in the vise. That's, that's how I usually do it. I don't know how good the audio is going to be over there, so I wanted to show you the beginning stages. But the idea is we'll eventually get this flat, and once it starts making a trench, we'll flip around to the side and we'll, we'll finish that off. We're going to bring it right down to the tape. We know the tape is our safe spot, and we're going to do that on both sides. So let's head over to the vise and uh, see if we can get that done. To file out that rectangular slot, I'm using this wooden block clamped in my, my bench vise. And I really like to use these implements made out of wood because uh, they're disposable. I can make them easily. I can shape them any way I want. And this vise is great because I can rotate it and I can basically position the thing anywhere I want in space. And it just provides a perfect work surface. So we're going to start taking cuts. Uh, slowly establishing that uh, that slot and we're going to use that little step as a, as a backstop for us. Well, not a backstop, but it's going to hold the part in place. And hopefully you can see I'm slowly rotating the file up to uh, a perpendicular position so that we're cutting a slot rather than cutting at an angle using that uh, little guide piece that we made, uh, the little guide cut that we made with the triangular file to get us started. And once I'm happy that I'm, I'm cutting st a straight slot, I flip over to the coarse side. Now on one side we've established that slot all the way down to the tape and we'll flip it over and do the same. It's important to keep the file clean. You can see the it fills up pretty well. Just using a file card here to clean out the, the gunk that builds up in the file brush it off and we're back in business. Now, as I'm getting deeper, it gets a little bit harder to cut. I'm just using some beeswax, being careful just to put it on the sides of the file. You don't want to get beeswax in your file, but just lubricating the sides a bit really helps. Okay, so now we're going to brush it out. Uh, i got a toothbrush that I use just for this. And we'll grab our calipers and measure. And we're close to 250, which is good. That's what we should be based on the tape. Now the next step is going to be to take down that, uh, that slot on both sides and to get it to around 200 and to do that I just use the same number of strokes on each side so I'm always removing the same amount of material from each side so here I believe I'm counting 10 strokes for 
flip it over, do the same number of strokes. And there we're done, we're right at 200. It really is remarkable how accurate you can be with files if you're careful, and especially careful to do similar strokes, the same number on each side. Uh, you can bring that down perfectly. All right, folks, hopefully the audio worked out on, on the, uh, the vice work I just did there, but just in case it didn't, we uh, were shooting for about two thousands, two, 20, sorry, 200 thousands. There we go. And that's where we're at. So pretty happy with that. Um, the next step is going to be to take this back to the belt stander using the tape edges as reference and using the uh, button that we just cut in, the, that bite zone that we just cut in as reference. We're going to do a linear taper from this piece of tape uh, that's sort of marking our no-go zone down to the uh, 200 thousand bite zone that we just established and so we're going to hopefully get just a relatively straight line maybe, maybe a little bit of a dip but we'll try we'll shoot for a straight line and we'll see how that works out i'm not going to film the any more of the belt sander that was really difficult to do and it it's easy to mess that up so if i don't have the right angle and everything if i got the camera in my way i'm gonna i'm gonna ruin this easily so uh, you get the idea of you know how the belt sander works and how I use it. I'm just going to do the same thing to start the rough shaping of this, and I'll be back once that's done. Okay, so the the next step then is to figure out our width here. You can see I've got this now uh, tapered, and bite zone is is pretty much a smooth transition, and we will be filing this more, but uh, that's going to be the basic shape of the stem in this dimension. Now we got to worry about this dimension. So to do that, I got to set the width of the bite zone or the width of the button. And I wanted to make it a little bit wider than what we have here. So what I've done is I've put some just regular scotch tape on this just to build it up and to see if I can have that much and still close this. And it does seem to close pretty well. So I'm going to go with that. I don't think I could go much thicker. Uh, but let's let's just measure that. And just try not to compress the tape too much. So that's looking about 620. So let's, let's write that down. Okay, and now we'll take the tape off. Where did I put the stem? Oh, it's right here. Now we'll take that tape off and, and see if that actually made a difference, because it might be that this is so tight that we're not going to really be able to, to do anything with it. Okay, tape is off. Who knew Scotch tape really liked amber? Uh, and let's see, we were... Yeah, so we, we were sitting at like 540, so that, that's a pretty nice increase. Um, you know, even if we went with 615 just to be safe, uh, we're getting a much more comfortable bite zone out of that. So let's go ahead and, and call it, uh, let's call it 615, because I, I just want to make sure that there's, the, there's no issue with the case closing. <clears throat> All right, so we know that the overall width is going to be six, 615 thousandths or 0.615 inches. And yeah, you can think of the, the bite zone as, or not the bite zone, I keep saying that, sorry, the button is gonna be something like this, and it's gonna have a slot in the middle of it. So we want this distance to be 0.615 inches. So to figure that out, we wanna know what this distance is. 
And of course we can measure that right through our tape here. Let's make sure we anchor it on both sides and really spread it out and we got the full thing. So that's about uh, three, let's call it 355. So now we need to just solve for this. And that's simply going to be 0.615 minus 0.355. Uh, where's my calculator? Yes, I can do it in my head, but I don't want to mess it up. All right, so that's 0 0.260. Uh, and then we want to divide that by 2. I know that's not proper math. Uh, and that's going to be 0 0.130. Could have done that one in my head. Okay. So that is what this is going to be. All right, so that's 0 0.130. So to, to figure out where that is, we're going to set our caliper to 0 0.130. And we're going to go ahead and reference off the end of that slot and just put a little divot there. It's probably barely visible. I can barely see it. But while I can see it, and it will disappear quickly, I'm going to take a razor blade, put it perpendicular to the tape, and I'm just going to cut right along that little divot. And that will allow me to remove the tape on that side. And now we'll do the same thing over here. This is a little bit harder to see. Let's try it this way. Okay, again, referencing off the edge of the slot. Hopefully you can see that tiny little hole that I poked in the, um, the tape. And now we're going to come perpendicular to that. Don't cut yourself with the razor blade. It's talking to me, not you. There we go. So the nice thing about that is we know that this tape is now centered on the slot and it's the size of the, the final size of the stem that we're shooting for. So we can now remove this because it's, it's really not doing anything for us anymore. We'll leave the, the lower section here because we, again, want to keep that safe. And now what we can do is we can go back to the band, band belt sander. There we go. <laughs> and using this as a reference, we can shape this out to that point. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. The belt sander is just annoying and loud and noisy. But I'll bring you back after I've got the sides shaped in. All right, there we go. So we're actually uh, pretty well roughed in at this point. Uh, the this did not come out to be exactly 620. We're a little bit over, about 20 thousandths, which is fine because we're going to be filing this and sanding it and all that. So this will ultimately be fine. Uh, the slot is well centered, so I'm happy about that. Uh, you can also see there's a little bit of an angle to these edges just because of the way I was holding it. Again, this is all going to be hand filed, so I'm not not worried about any of that. Uh, now we've got the final shaping to do. So obviously we, we want to get this bite zone to be flat so it's comfortable. We want to bring down some of these sides, uh, you know, just to add to the taper uh, along here. And eventually we're going to need to do some shaping up here uh, before we finalize everything. So the first step is to uh, get the bite zone flat. And I'm just using this. Uh, this is a... Uh, Grobet uh, zero, 00. So really nice file, very fine, uh, but works well for the job. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do this on the vise, but it's too hard to film. So I hope you hope you don't mind if I do it off screen. But basically, I'm just gonna be coming with this. This has a safe edge here, referencing off that uh, back end of what will eventually be the button, and just flattening. And I'll do that on both sides uh, until we've got a nice flat uh, bite zone that uh, 
we, you know, we get rid of any ridges or anything, and that's going to be finalizing this part, and then we'll shape around it. So let me go ahead and do that, and I'll bring you back when we're ready for the next uh, phase of shaping. All right, so I've gone ahead and, and flattened this um, this bite zone, and I, I I don't mean that it's going to be you know perfectly flat in this way. I just mean that there's going to be a flat there uh, for your teeth to rest on, and it is angled up in in this direction, of course, because that's the way the stem is tapering. Uh, but hopefully you can you can pick that out a little bit. You might be able to see there's a small ridge right here from the edge of the file uh, where the file dug in which is perfectly fine uh, that's all going to get filed away so the next step uh, and again I'm, I apologize I'm not going to be able to video this just because it, it's too awkward to have the camera um, I've got this block that just has various size holes in it and that'll hold this while I file it this is called a, a volcrylic wax file and it's really quite good uh, this is an inexpensive one uh, that I got from Amazon, and I think these were like two for, for eight dollars or something like that. And I've used these for years. I more recently purchased this one. This is a this is a Grobe, um, very good high quality file. Uh, to be honest, I don't reach for this one very often. This was probably like thirty dollars. Uh, these just for whatever reason seem to uh, seem to be fine, and you can see they they wear out. You know, over time, I've, I've used these a lot. This is probably not my oldest one. Oh no, this is this is the newer one. So you can see here, comparing the teeth on on these two, this one's kind of worn out. Uh, so you know, <laughs> you find the tools that work for you. This will get clamped in the in the vise, and I will now be using this to shape to get to towards the final shape, uh, which is the last step before sanding. So lots of filing to go and I'll bring you back intermittently as we proceed. So my hope is that we got some reasonable footage of, uh, of filing over there at the uh, the vise. I don't know how good that's going to turn out, so I uh, may or may not be able to put that in. But uh, what we did was we, you know, we just kind of refined the shape. Uh, you'll notice I put these marks on the side. That's just using uh, a silver sharpie. Uh, I like this for the darker colors. I could have used black on this, but uh, yeah, it, it came to hand first. But if you're doing a vulcanite stem, this is really fantastic because that silver stands out very well against the black. And that's just to give me a, an idea of where the center line is. And, you know, I want to approach that and sort of be even on both sides. So uh, we, you know, the, the, the rough shaping is done. Uh, actually, most of the shaping is done. The only thing left is going to be sanding. And in particular, we're going to want to do some sanding to match this to the pipe so that to, to the match this part of the stem to the shank so that that's still to come okay so the next but it, thing to do then is going to be to shape the, the funnel and that's the last thing we'll do before we shape the the outside of the button uh, to do that I've got two tools that I'm going to use uh, and I've misplaced one so I've got these uh, 
little side cutting bits and you can get these from Raw Crafted and other uh, suppliers and they are going to do the bulk of the funnel cutting. Uh, I'm going to use these just to get rid of most of the material in there. And then I'm going to use this guy here, which is one of these slot saws from Vermont Freehand. Uh, this is a bit short because I probably broke it a few times and replaced it in the handle. Uh, but that's okay. It'll, it'll work out just fine. And that I'll use to do the final refinement. And I will try to get video of that, but again, it's a little tough uh, fitting the camera in there. So let's see what we can do. All right, so we got the, the slot funneled, and the way I measure that is I've got this really fine uh, needle here. And I just kind of put it in, and I'm just looking at the angle. So looking at the angle on that side and the angle on that side, and they seem to be comparable. And then I will just apply some downward pressure in this case and just drag this out and watch how it's leaving. And there shouldn't be any abrupt jumps. It should just kind of glide right on out. And that's because it's riding right up against a nice smooth surface all the way out. That's what you want. I'm happy with that. And we'll do some final refinement of that with some with a diamond file and whatnot. Uh, so the slot's not done, but it's, it's pretty close to done. And we're happy. Next step is to get the button shaped out. Um, and I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to begin on the belt sander just to take the edges off of this and, and get us to the point where we can file it more readily. And then we're going to use, usually I use this file here. This is a Nicholson number one. And uh, it's got it's got two safe edges so I can use it in here to sort of modify the uh, the depth of the button here. I can use it around the edges here to, to shape this. And then finally I'll hold it at an angle and use it to kind of uh, smooth that out and you know give it that little bit of an angle that you, you want on the end of the button. Uh, this is all really fine work. I don't want to try to do this on camera, but you've seen me file enough now. You kind of get the idea. So let me let me get this button shaped and then I'll bring you back and we'll talk about the next stage which is going to be fitting this to the shank. All right folks so we have now effectively shaped the button uh, obviously still needs some sanding. I've done a light 220 sanding on all of this just to get the file marks out and now we're going to turn our attention to fitting this to the stummel. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is get this tape off because it's going to be in the way. Uh, but of course it's done its job of preventing us from doing any sanding or filing up in that area. So that area is going to be nice and still and round. And the goal here, because we want that piece of silver to fit over this, we don't want to change it any more than we absolutely have to. And because that's right off the lathe, it uh, doesn't have any file marks in it, it'll need minimal sanding. All right, so we're going to go ahead and this this is the side that I wanted to have for the top. I've put some just just simple uh, regular old scotch tape on this just to give me a a little bit of protection and more importantly to let me know uh, when I start to hit it. It'll scuff up. And we'll go ahead and put the stem in and make sure that it's clocked properly. That's really important because we don't want to file away stem material and find out that we've been twisted one way or the other. And now all we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, one of these nail boards. Uh, this is a fairly coarse 80 grit nail board and I'm just going to go ahead and slowly remove material from the top edge where that ridge is. And this is going to take some time and it's going to be easier for me to do off camera. You don't have to watch me do this. The important thing is to try to only remove the material from the area that's that's proud. Uh, I'm not going to be doing anything on the bottom because that's fitting very well. And uh, when we're done, we will next be able to move on to uh, the finishing steps. So what we still need to do with this... Oh, by the way, I did uh, do some work on the uh, airway there. Just uh, filed that out with... So this is just a a needle file that I've modified, so I've ground it to have three safe edges and one uh, edge that I can file with, so I can just go in there and uh, smooth that out. 
and then I finish it off with this diamond file, uh, which just gives a nice smooth surface. I will polish the inside of that with some polishing compound on a pipe cleaner, but uh, that's like a last step. So what, what remains to be done other than this shaping is to sand and to get the silver back on. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna buff the pipe up, uh, clean it, clean it, and buff it and wax it. So the the stumble. So we'll do that, uh, and then we'll need to remount the silver. And we still have not glued in the tenon, so we're gonna have to do that. Uh, I'd like to do that sort of towards the end. It, you know, it obviously fits very well. But I'll pull that out. I'll put some epoxy on, sink it back in, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to re-drill the airway with that tapered bit, because I want the uh, the taper to be uh, continuous all the way through from the start of the tenon all the way down to the where it becomes a 1 16th inch draft. So I'll do that uh, probably off camera, but it's it's really simple. I just mount the drill bit in the lathe. Um, headstock and then I will just very carefully advance this onto the drill bit and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that when I get to it. But right now, lots and lots of sanding. I'll bring you back uh, before the next stage. All right, well we are getting really close now. So uh, I took care of the stumble. It's all uh, buffed up, polished, shined, uh, ready to go. And I did this now because the customer has specifically requested that I not remove the patina on the silver. So I wanted this to pretty much be done uh, before reuniting it with the silver band. And uh, that's fine because we'll just give it a quick um, quick uh, light coat of wax after everything's together. That'll protect the silver a bit, but it shouldn't remove any of the patina. <clears throat> so we're ready to press this back on. As you can see, that's not going to be too difficult at all. And I might put a tiny drop of super glue in there just to uh, keep it from coming loose in the future. But it is tight. It tightens up quite a bit there, so it will sink on that last uh, eighth of an inch or so. And we'll do that by heating the band. Uh, you've seen me put bands on before, hopefully. Uh, I'll heat it, I'll set it down, and then I'll bring this down and push it straight down. For the stem, uh, stem is finished, uh, polished, uh, waxed, ready to go. Again, I needed to do that because we don't want to disrupt the uh, the silver patina at all. Same process here. This is going to be a little tricky. Uh, it's going to be a somewhat tight fit, but we know this fits because this uh, lines up so well with the with the shank here. So this has to fit, and uh, we'll we'll get it in there. A little bit of heat should expand this enough that we'll be able to drive that on. Uh, keeping those wings aligned with the, the button and uh, hopefully making it look nice. I have not glued this together yet because I wanted to be able to push this straight down and, and seat it. So the work that remains is to install the silver on the stummel and on the uh, stem, to glue in the tenon, and then once glued in to drill again just to ensure that the pathway is tapered all the way down and I'm just going to do that by mounting the tapered drill in the lathe and pushing it in by hand. Really simple operation. Most of what I'm going to be cutting is Delrin so it's, it's really not going to be uh, a problem to do it that way. And then that's it. Then we just reassemble it and send it back to Jose and uh, wish him all the best with it. So I'm going to do those last steps and I'll bring you back to see the finished product. And we have a finished pipe. Uh, as you can see, it fits in the case quite nicely. I've uh, returned the silver to the stem and was able to get that all back on pretty well without uh, causing any issues with the patina, which is what Jose wanted. Uh, the stem is, I've, I've extended the taper in the airway, polished the airway, and as you can see, it passes a pipe cleaner with no issue straight through to the bowl. So I'm happy about that. Uh, I think overall we've done a pretty good job of, of replicating, or, or not replicating, but, but sort of matching the original stem in a way where we've got a modern stem that's consistent with the original. Uh, you know, th this is a very chunky stem and we've done a good job of just maintaining that linear taper, but we do have a more modern bite zone button and, and airway on it, so I think this is going to provide Jose with uh, quite a bit of smoking pleasure. Uh, the one oddity in this job was the tenon, and uh, as you can see it's a rather long Delrin tenon. We've got a nice slip fit on that, so I didn't want this to be too hard to take in and out, 
because the um, the walls of this shank are quite fragile. Uh, you know, we had to thin it out quite a bit in order to convert it to a push tenon. There are some cracks in it uh, that were there when I took the silver band off. The silver band is hopefully going to provide some protection for those, and of course we've we glued them, so they should be okay. Um, but the the unusual length of this was necessary because the bone screw went so far into the into the briar here that uh, it was the only way that we could really make sure that we had a um, a clean airway without any pockets for gurgling. So there we have it. You know, I think the most interesting thing about this is that. Uh, you know, this pipe's over a hundred years old, and it was made at a time when the materials we used here, acrylic and Delrin, did not even exist. So, uh, good old Eliza Wade could not have imagined that this would be happening to uh, one of his pipes. Uh, I'd like to think he'd be pleased. Uh, pleased to know that it's still being used and that it's been brought up to modern standards. So thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this series. I hope Jose enjoys his pipe. I ask you to please click that like uh, button. It really does help us out. If you're not a subscriber and you liked this, click the subscribe button because uh, I do these videos fairly frequently and uh, you'll get updates when the next one comes out. Thank you all for watching.